Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to TVS Motors Company Limited Q1 FY25 Post Results Earnings Conference Call hosted by Batliwala and Karani Securities India Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anamalai Jairaj from Batliwal and Karani Securities India Private Limited. Thank you and over to you sir. Uh, thank you. Welcome to TBS Motor Company. Point to refer to the process of conference call. From TBS Motor Company Management, we have with us today Mr. K. and Radha Krishnan, Director and Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. K. Gopal Deshigan, Chief Financial Officer. I'll now hand over the call to Mr. K. and R. for the opening remarks, to be followed by Mr. Over to you, sir. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. Q1 of uh, 2024, the company continued its growth trajectory, posted its highest revenue, EBITDA and profits. This was possible through continued improvement in sales, better product mix and sustained cost reduction initiatives. When we look at the Q1 uh, quarter, the company's operating revenue grew by 16%, 8,376 crores, as against uh, last year's corresponding quarter, 7,218 crores. Two-wheeler domestic ice sales grew by 14% compared to Q1 of last year. Our, uh, we grew ahead of the industry in retail. Two-wheeler international market uh, company sales grew by 16% over the last year. On ice, uh, to, 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 total two-wheeler ice sales grew by 14% compared to last year Q1. EV 200 sales is at 52,000 units as against last year's Q1 of 39,000. Total sales three wheeler is at 31,000, slightly lower than first quarter of last year. On profits during this quarter, the company registered highest ever operating EBITDA of rupees 960 crores with a growth of 26% as against EBITDA of 764 crores during Q1 of last year. Any note that we have not recognized PLI incentive in this quarter. The company's operating EBITDA margin improved by 90 bits at 11.5% as against 10.6 during last year first quarter. And as you know, Q4 last year financial, uh, financial year 24 was 11.3. Company posted its highest ever profit before tax of 783 crores, recording a growth of 28% during this quarter as against 610 crores in the first quarter of last year. PPT for this quarter includes uh, 28 crores towards fair valuation of the investment held by the company. Profit after tax grew by 23%, 577 crores as against 468 crores during the first quarter of last year. Q4, uh, the PAT was uh, 486 crores. On TVS credit, TVS credit continued to do very well. Now we have more than 1.5 crores customer base. Book size crossed already 26,000 crores. Now the book size is 26,351 crores. Books uh, grew by 20% over last year Q1. TVS credit PBT for the quarter grew by 19%, 187 crores as against 157 crores during Q1 of last year. TVS credit services by leveraging cutting edge technology and analytics offers products in expanded portfolio financing for used car, consumer durables, new and used cars, used commercial vehicles, with corporate loan, road loan, apart from two-wheeler and three-wheeler financing. Regarding Northern, we are planning to launch uh, already six uh, new products over the next three years. The first of these models will be available end of next year and it will also go on sale in India soon after the international launch. The new range of motorcycles will be more affordable than the current lineup while still retaining the premium positioning that TVS is seen for Northern to command. As you know, Northern is super premium and uh, this brand has got great value. On EV, TVS IQ established as a very strong brand in the EV segment in its technology, 
that features the sim card quality. During this quarter, company introduced new variants to the IQ portfolio for making electric mobility accessible to everyone. TVS IQ is now available in three battery options to choose from 2.2 kilowatts, 3.4 kilowatts, and 5.1 kilowatts. TVS IQ now offers an array of five variants available in vibrant 11 colors, making this one of the largest and most attractive EV portfolios in the market. The feedback from the market and the customers are very positive. As you know, we have a well-planned product lineup for electric mobility and you will be witnessing some of the launches soon. Last year we started TVS IQ to few ASEAN and Asia markets. We will expand EV product sales to both developing and developed markets. We strongly believe that India will emerge as a major export hub for two-wheeler EV. The continuous improvement in the EV supply chain and infrastructure, we are confident that we will continue to be a strong player in the EV segment. On outlook for Q2, I think the recent budget laid by the government in India focuses on employment generation, continued higher commitment to infrastructure and rural economy, to the present mo this will add to the present momentum. We are expecting rural to recover. If they expect a normal monsoon, we could witness robust uh, growth in uh, Q2. For the first time, we are seeing rural doing slightly better than the other. The improving road infrastructure and economic environment will drive the demand for two-wheeler mobility. And we have got a huge opportunity in the medium and the long term, given the challenges in mobility as well as also investment from the government on the infrastructure and road development. During this first quarter, the ICE Wahan industry grew by 13% over the first quarter of last year. I think this is an excellent uh, comeback on the Wahan growth. On international business, there were some challenges in Red Sea that is affecting the transit times and increased also timely availability of vessels containers is a, is, a, is a concern. We had some challenges in our dispatches in Q1. We have taken enough countermeasures to mitigate these challenges and situation is likely to improve in Q2. During this quarter, we added HLX 125 5 gear to our portfolio. The new motorcycle offers features that are powerful and efficient. It has best in class durability, requires minimal maintenance as a superior engine, provides excellent mileage and performs across the terrain. This will definitely further strengthen our international product portfolio. Certain select African markets are facing challenges due to currency devaluation and persistent inflation. However, considering the base effect in our assessment, the possibility of further decline in Africa is low. We feel that we will be doing better in Africa this year. LATAM gives us a huge opportunity. We have started exporting to LATAM. Asia, we are seeing some challenges in Bangladesh, but we are hopeful that things will settle down soon. Middle East also a huge opportunity for TVS and we are strengthening this area. Our upcoming launches, I want to highlight that there will be one product in ICE and one product in EV, which will be coming soon in this quarter. And that will strengthen, further strengthen our excellent range of product portfolio. Our Strong product portfolio, our unwavering focus on the consumer quality, new products and attractive quality and technology with features. We are confident that we will outperform the industry both in domestic and international market. Extremely happy that Ibiza has already crossed 11.5. We will continue to leverage scale benefits, better product mix and sustained effort on cost reduction. This will enable us to further improve our Ibiza going forward. And uh, we are we are uh, very confident that all the product brands, portfolio of brands, just starting from brands starting from Apache, Jupiter, Jupiter 125, iCube, Raider, Entos, the Star Range, HLX, Radeon, TVS King, TVS Rounding, we are very confident that we will do better than the industry in both domestic and international across ICE and EV segments. Thank you.
Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Chandra Molimotia from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, and thank you for taking my questions. Uh, my first question is just um, on the other expenses line this quarter. Seems to be about 11.4% of the total top line. The last time we had another expenses, um, this high in ratio versus top line was around um, the June 2020 quarter during COVID. Um, so I just want to understand, is there any one-off uh, in the other expenses line item this quarter? Because we've seen 3% QOQ revenue growth, but other expenses has grown um, much, much higher. The yeah, other expenses, uh, uh, you are comparing Q1 of last year to this year's Q1? I'm just saying the 11.4% the other expenses ratio versus top line is uh, not been there this are, high. There are, there, are three, there are three important things. One is uh, one variable nature, packing, freight, everything has gone up. It's about 60 crores. Okay, this is primarily because of the increase in turnover. And also the investment in brand building activities, which has resulted in increasing marketing expenses almost 87 crores. Okay, and as I, as I have highlighted earlier, we are investing in digital technologies and innovation. That is another 35 crores. So effectively, it is between variable expenses of almost 60 crores and brand building in marketing about 87 crores and digital and another innovation activities about 35 crores. Got it. That's helpful. Uh, second question is related to the PLI incentives. Um, so just want to understand, um, I think some of your peers, most of your peers in the two-wheeler industry are already booking the PLI incentives and, and, and you are also eligible. Uh, so I just want to understand um, uh, what, what the thinking is behind um, holding back from booking the PLI incentives um, in our accounts and, and how to think about as and when we book, will it sort of be lumpy for the whole year, um, you know, particular quarter next year? Uh, one is as as informed uh, by KNR, we have not recognized the PLI in the reported numbers. Our products are eligible and are certified and we meet all the requirements of DBA. Only recently the government has issued an SOP in this regard. We are in the process of finalizing a revenue recognition for this purpose. Conservatively, we have not recognized PLI incentive in Q1. And second question, you have asked that as and when you recognize it be a, a, a bumpy number. The answer to that is, that is we will clearly give a note that what is relatable to this quarter and what is relatable to the previous quarters as and when we recognize. Got it. That's very helpful. And my last question is just around if you could give us the export revenue for the quarter, the spares revenue for the quarter. And also, if you could roughly indicate what is your uh, current annual exposure in volume terms to Bangladesh. Bangladesh is very, very small. Uh, I'll answer from that. Okay, uh, as far as we are concerned, because there were some mm -hmm. modifications and structuring we were changing in the Bangladesh. So, um, numbers are very, very small. In terms of IB total revenue, 1,963 crores for Q1. Mm -hmm. What was your other question? Parts, sir. Correct, correct. Just a minute, just a minute. Parts is about uh, 846 crores. So, sir, could you repeat that? 846. 46. Awesome. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kapil Singh from Nomura. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir, and congratulations on a strong performance. Uh, can we talk about we had a good improvement in the gross margins uh, for the quarter? Uh, we omitted the sales ratio, seeing a significant drop. So, is was there softening of commodities, price increases? If you could give how much, yeah, and how much each of these are contributing? 
I think uh, the, between Q1 uh, to, to this year, Q1 to Q4, uh, primarily it is sustained material cost reduction initiatives and uh, product and geography mix. Uh, that is the reason uh, of about 1.4% benefit. Of course, there was a small selling price increase and there was a commodity price increase. I think the selling price increase was about 0.2% and commodity price increase was, cost increase was also similar. So primarily it has come from the material cost reduction and uh, the, the geography and better product mix. This are it last quarter, I think uh, uh, there was a price uh, increase of about 0.5%, but uh, uh, it, there was a strong uh, uh, material cost reduction and also commodity softening when you compare last year Q1 to this year Q1. Uh, uh, so overall these are the key reasons. Okay. And so task cost has also seen a uh, strong growth, so is this uh, sustainable level of task cost or, or there are any lumpy items here? Which one? Stop. The task cost. Yeah, task cost, uh, like I always highlighted, you know, the significant increase, there are, there are three or four components in that, one is performance appraisal, approximately about 10% is uh, performance appraisal. Uh, cost and uh, there were uh, the other additional increases because of the digital and uh, EV and software related electronics related we have definitely increased the strength to there so significant increase has gone to only additional people in ICE we have not added people okay and for small increases the production there are some small numbers but that will not cost more than five crores sure and so lastly, just want to check on the, uh, you know, capex plan and investment plan for FY25. And also, you know, we saw some increases in, uh, you know, the loss for Swiss e-mobility and also Norton. So just some color if you could share, like, um, what what is the operating environment uh, in, in both of these companies and how should we think about the evolution of these uh, Losses will be will uh, because you're going to launch a few more motorcycles in Norton, for example. Uh, will the losses increase a little bit before they start coming down? And similarly, on safety mobility, also if you can share how the business is doing and uh, you know what is the growth plan. So majority of the investments in Q1 were credit services about 300 crores. Norton was about 100 crores, and uh, the electric EV EV cycle business was about 30 crores. So, and some small amount in TVS digital. So, significant proportion has gone to TVS credit services and about 100 crores for Norton. Sorry, uh, so I'll just repeat the question. Basically, I'm, I'm looking for the outlook on CapEx and investments for oh, out, Outlook on the CapEx. I think CapEx plan for uh, this year will be about 1,000, 1,100 crores. I think that that number remains uh, around that. And uh, investment? Investments also will be of the same order, slightly maybe higher. The total investment. Sure, sure. I was uh, referring to also I was referring to the full year performance of Norton and Swiss e Mobility. If you could share some outlook uh, in terms of because we saw loss of 240 crores for Swiss e Mobility and uh, close to 400 crores for Norton. Norton, we are now designing and developing, like I said, you know, uh, significant proportion is going on in investment design, uh, design and development of the product. So the kind of investments whatever we are making all are towards uh, the engineering, development, product, uh, in, uh, you know, all technology investments. So everything related to product is the investment there. On e-mobility, uh, as you know, Europe has been very slow, this year economy has been very slow and uh, what we have seen is uh, the stock levels in the industry has also gone up substantially. So the discounts in the market are very very high. So that is the biggest reason. But we are pretty confident that uh, you know things will better off possibly in a year's time. So we may have to have you know patience this year because EV cycles are definitely going to be very good for the future, the market size is big, but unfortunately, you know, this year, given the challenges of Europe, what is it going through, I think that is the biggest problem. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. And have
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gunjan from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my questions. Just uh, you know, just uh, continuing with the same uh, you know Norton um, in the earlier question. Um, uh, I I see that you've mentioned that there will be still eight quarters of investment here. Uh, so is it you know how should I think about revenue uh, contribution from Norton? Um, you know, starting to kick in. Should we expect F26 is when the product monetization happens, or if it's F27? And when you look at this eight quarters, is it possible to quantify how much more investments in Northern? See, last next year, last quarter, you will start seeing uh, the changes because we are looking at end of uh, 2025. Then after that, uh, possibly every quarter or every two quarters, you will see the launches in a, in a series. And uh, investments, similar amounts will go up because. Uh, uh, till till we come up with the first model, the revenue will start kicking in, and then possibly we will see how to cut down the investments. But six models we are looking at, and they are going to be completely new. Okay, and so how much has been invested so far in Northern? Uh, can you share that number? Just a minute. Just a minute. Uh, I, I will come back to you on this uh, uh, in a minute or so. If you have any other question, you can ask or others can. I will come back to you on this. So on Northern only, sir, just, uh, you also mentioned that you know it will eventually be brought to India. So if you know if you can share your thoughts, how should we be thinking about the brand uh, in terms of bring you know introducing it in India and you know are these six products relevant for India as well? See, uh, India is a huge market. And uh, as you know, India has got super premium customers. So we are very confident that which product, which are applicable to which market, so that to launch, I'll share with you. But I'm very sure that uh, we will be launching some of these products in India because they are applicable to Indian market, and we are also looking at this as a huge opportunity in India. Okay, and the second question is on the electric pipeline. You did mention, you know, in the near term, you you will have two launches: one electric, one ice. Uh, is the electric launch is on the two-wheeler side or on the three-wheeler side? Because three-wheeler was also something that you'd spoken about is due for you know this fiscal yeah. launch. So any any color on that? There is a there is a two-wheeler, there is a three-wheeler, there is another ice uh, two-wheeler. All you will see between all you will see between two two and two three. Okay. So the north end north end investment is around thousand two hundred crores. Thousand two hundred twelve hundred crores. Yes, yes, twelve hundred crores. Okay, and lastly, on uh, you know this whole CNG um, uh, you know as a launch option or as a powertrain. Is that something we see viable? Is there a use case and you know any thoughts that we could see you guys also looking at the CNG product development? See, we always worked on multiple technologies. Okay, we have uh, flex fuel, we have EV, we have CNG three wheeler now. See, what is most important is we look at uh, there is a product plan and a delivery plan. Okay, since we have the capability, we will uh, study that and we will look at it as and when it is required. So it is more on uh, at appropriate time, we will look at it, uh, what is required. But there is a very clear product cadence and the launch plans we have already planned. Okay, so it's fair to assume that it will be EV as a priority for now in terms of product pipeline and CNG is something that, you know, we have the capability but we'll revisit at, at a later time. I didn't say anything like that. I said there are, there are multiple technologies where we have a very strong R&D. And there is a very clear product plan we have, and we would like to adhere to the product plan and deliver the products to the market because these are all based on the customer understanding and white spaces in the market. Like I already said, there is CNG three wheeler, so we look at uh, fossil fuel, we look at flex fuel, we look at EV, we look at CNG. So uh, as and when it is appropriate, uh, we will we will look at the market. Okay, got it. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. 
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pramod Kumar from UBS. Please go yeah. ahead. Uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity, sir. So, my uh, before I start the question, just a clarification. Uh, not in uh, I, I missed that part when you talked about the timeline of the first launch. Was it uh, end of which year, sir? Fiscal year 25 or 26, sir? 25. Fiscal year 25, is it? Okay, uh, that's good to hear. And, sir, uh, by uh, first calendar year of 2025. Yeah, calendar year of 2025. For them, uh, yeah, it is last quarter of next year, let's, let's put it that way. Last quarter of next financial year. So that will be FI26, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. The, thanks. Thanks for that, sir. And uh, the first question is on the, uh, you made a comment on the other ex marketing expenditure being higher by a significant amount. Just want to understand, does it include international markets in terms of your uh, uh, marketing plans there and launches and foreign into new markets or is it is it predominantly for domestic? These are all investments done for future uh, brand building and some of our product related mark, uh, uh, brand building. So, Including international. I say that uh, anything on uh, marketing is an investment. I don't consider it as a cost because we have to build brand. Yeah. Okay. Like on one side we invest behind R&D and technology, we invest behind marketing expenses. So, uh, but this includes international markets as well? Yeah, yeah. It, it is total, total. Okay, okay. And uh, sir, on the, you talked a lot about the digital efforts and the R&D efforts. Uh, so you can just help us uh, 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 kind of get a size of uh, kind of investments you made in terms of headcount what you added or how big your digital endeavors are in terms of manpower, or how big is your software team right now because uh, we don't hear other OEMs talking about software investments. Uh, so you can just help us to, so that we get to know that uh, what the kind of areas where uh, the kind of capabilities what you built in terms of team strength. So if you can just help us uh, digital, navigate digital, with that. Digital, digital analytics team, we have more than 200 people. Software, we have more than 150 people. Electronics, we have similar number. So all, all put together, I would say that 450 to 500 people in the new areas of technology we have added. Okay, okay. And a uh, lot of these uh, hiring and even software EV development parts are largely uh, expense of uh, given because your average capitalization rate is only 30, 30 to 33% of R&D. But uh, how would, would that be the case even with EV investments? Because some of the other companies have different uh, capitalization rates. So I just want to understand how does your EV and software and still capitalization rates compared to your uh, normal R&D expenses, sir? So no, we, we strictly follow the accounting standards for uh, uh, whether it is revenue recognition or accounting of expenses. We don't unnecessarily capitalize or we don't unnecessarily charge. We strictly comply with the accounting standards. Okay, fair enough, sir. And uh, sir, on the, on the, you talk about multiple launches, but uh, on radar, uh, the general feedback from dealers is that there are more variants required because our product is already at a pretty good premium to the underlying competition in terms of price point, and even the variants start at a much elevated level in terms of features. So is there any plans of uh, doing more variant mixes there to make the plan more accessible? And also, do you see a necessity for an ABS choice for the 125cc motorcycle category? Currently, we don't have it. This is, this is part of our, always we look at variants. We look at, uh, you know, depending upon the customer segment. So uh, I think this is part of our uh, design and development uh, thinking process. So we will, we will cater Raider as a great brand. And we will continue to look at, uh, you know, variants and appropriately applicable to the market and segment, customer segment. And the final question on EVs, uh, if you can uh, help us understand where is our reach now, uh, because some of your competitors have gone kind of seen a distribution strategy and gone pan India with a lot of the dealers already planning, but here are the, in terms of reach on EVs on IQ, and uh, how should one look at the distribution uh, and consequently the market share aspirations uh, as go pan India, if you can just help us understand the timeline and the uh, expected delta to market share, and how's the demand for the overall EV basket? So because generally we've seen price drops and discounts and freebies and schemes uh, driving sales for the industry. In that context, how does our pricing and de demand uh, equation work or something? See, we have uh, all of you know that uh, currently we have about 750 dealers, okay, and uh, who are who are giving uh, IQ. Okay, this is covering about 400. Uh, we have also come up with uh, uh, variants in, I, I already highlighted that we have now three variants which are added in, uh, in IQ. And uh, e each one brings certain specific customer value 
ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് വെരി വെരി ക്രിറ്റിക്കൽ ആൻഡ് ദ പ്രൈസ് പോയിന്റ്സ് ആർ ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ദ ക്രിറ്റിക്കൽ വാല്യൂ വാട്ട് വി ആർ ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ സ്റ്റാർട്ടിംഗ് ഫ്രോം ടു പോയിന്റ് ടു കിലോ വാട്ട് ത്രീ പോയിന്റ് കിലോ വാട്ട് ആൻഡ് ഫൈവ് പോയിന്റ് വൺ കിലോ വാട്ട് സോ ഐ ക്യൂബ് ഇസ് എ വെരി സ്ട്രോങ് ബ്രാൻഡ് ആൻഡ് ദീസ് ബ്രാൻഡ് ഡിപെൻഡിംഗ് അപ്പോൺ ദ ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് ദ കസ്റ്റമർ ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് ദ യു നോ യൂസേജ് ദിസ് ആർ പ്രൈസ് പൊസിഷൻ ഗെയർ and i am very confident that this will do very well to the customers and the market and we want to continue to be a strong player in the ev market so and by when will you be pan india and in terms of the delta in terms of what will market what you will achieve by doing so no one of the one of the we are reviewing and then we are supporting this with uh, the current network we have a strong network of uh, main dealers and sub dealers in india so we will keep expanding that and the current demand versus supply sir are we uh, in balance now or are we currently because of new variants we see higher demand than supply at this in the, at this point in time okay but this is not a problem because it is not a problem only thing is it may you know when you have three variants you have to look at uh, there are a lot of common parts so but we have to look at wherever the delta is going up but it's not a challenge okay and sir other expenditure as a percentage how would you how should you see that uh, or model it in because But there will be investments which is all required for the future but as a percentage do you expect that to be kind of uh, uh, getting better or getting favorable from here on see we treat all these are investments whether it is uh, marketing investments other than the variable nature whatever i highlighted on tracking and freight because that is proportional to the turnover whether it is marketing expenses or digital investments okay i am very sure you must be happy with 11 and a half percent ebitda okay we don't look at each and every item and try to optimize each and every item because many of the investments which are going into marketing or uh, digitization the benefits of that will come in the future yep so yeah nice sir thanks a lot and best of luck sir thank you the next question is from the line of arvind sharma from city bank please go ahead Uh, good evening sir thank you for taking my question is it possible to share uh, the impact of ev on the margins in the quarter so we we look at only consolidated between the i sat the ev overall uh, you know our our profitability has moved to 11.5 which is one of the best okay thank most you. importantly please understand ev has got positive contribution which i have highlighted okay but there are investments on product technology software capex okay and uh, many of these are very very clear investments for the future sure thank you sir and uh, just one more question more of clarification on two cost items first is on depreciation uh, the expenses seem to have gone quarter gone down quarter on quarter any special reason for that So probably some of the 100% depreciation item because we go strictly by the capitalization and uh, uh, the, the depreciation uh, percentage is what we consider based on the economic life of the asset. Some of the, uh, 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 in Q4 of last year, we had a write-off of some of the slow-moving model tools to the extent of uh, around 15 crores. Uh, therefore, that is a one-off item. Even otherwise, some of the 100% depreciation, so, so some slight increase or decrease is bound to happen. All right, sir. And this is uh, this is the run rate that one should expect over the coming quarters as well. So it depends on the it depends upon the capitalization what we do going forward. We cannot be static number. Sure, sir. One final question is. Uh, the fair valuation gains uh, which exact entity are these gains from uh this is uh, this is this is one second one second uh, we 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 invested in our uh, tvs supply chain i think the fair market price has gone up uh, between last quarter and this quarter all right sir thank you so much for taking my questions sir. that's all from my side thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Amin Pirani from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, most of my questions have been answered. Uh, my question was actually on the EV exports bid that you mentioned. 
Now, uh, the ASEAN market, you know, is a region where, you know, most Indian two-wheeler exporters have not had a lot of success because the Japanese OEMs dominate that market. But you have a local presence in Indonesia. I think we've also, uh, you know, um, started some new uh, entity in Vietnam. So uh, can you give a broad sense as to, you know, maybe three years down the line, what is the level of export of EVs that we can expect? And in these markets, would you need to have local production uh, of, of the EVs to sell them in a meaningful number or can you export from India? See, uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, you know, we will definitely start exporting our EV products to uh, ASEAN markets and uh, already some ad uh, advanced testing and everything is done there, so it will start. Number two, fortunately for us, there is a there is our own plan, and yeah. we have some local sourcing, so we don't see foresee a problem because the moment you have in Indonesia, then there is an ASEAN FTA, so that that advantage will help us. So I cannot be able to give you a three-year roadmap, but we will definitely leverage our EV products uh, from Indonesia to other markets. And, and so just as a follow-up to that, if I can ask, um, would you have to make significant upgradation to your Indonesia facility to achieve that? Or, or, or is your Indonesia facility also, you know, uh, at a level where it can, you know, uh, uh, manufacture EVs as well? So we have a good, uh, good plan that facilities are there. There may be some specific investments related to EV, but on the... Uh, you know, the other uh, basic chassis or other other things, there may not be a big challenge. So, you need to EV, if there are something required, we will uh, definitely look at it. Oh. Oh. Thank you, sir. I'll come back to this. Thank you. The next question is from the line. Moksh Mandela from Anandarati Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, sir, firstly, on the e 2 wheeler market, uh, uh, growth has slowed down in recent times uh, despite the new affordable models in the market. Just want to understand how are the customer looking at the EV products uh, despite the better price points? What are challenges you are seeing for the EV penetration? See, EV, we have to always look at uh, medium to long term. Okay, any, any new technology, initially there will be a quick uptake. Okay, and uh, thanks to the government, there are a lot of uh, benefits also given. But in my opinion, EV will continue to slowly and steadily grow. Okay, uh, because EV has got some unique advantages, okay. but equally other other technologies are also having advantages. So in my opinion, EV will grow. Okay, and uh, government is continuing to invest and supporting many of the initiatives in the EV. So I'm I'm pretty confident that. I know there are some challenges in the last one year in terms of, you know, suddenly the, uh, the same benefits significantly come down, okay? So there is a little bit of slowness, but these are all, any new technology, you know, beyond the point, I always highlight that we cannot be dependent on uh, huge investment from the government, but they have done the right thing in terms of supporting the initial period, and there is also PLI. So what is most important is, uh, we have to show a little bit of patience because EV technology, EV products, customers will start liking it, the TCO will support, and the overall it will grow. But please remember, I always believe that all these technologies are going to be available in India. It's not that, uh, you know, you will see. But I'm, I, I always look at from the customer point of view, you know, customers are technologically agnostic. They will look at the product, they will look at uh, the benefits, what they are getting, and the usage. Depending upon that, they will use whether it is rice or CNG or ethanol or EV. It's like the combination of things, they will look at it. So that is the way I look at it. Got it, sir. Uh, so secondly, uh, you mentioned the rule uh, doing better than urban markets. Also, if you can share some thoughts on how the first time and the replacement buyers, additional buyers are doing. And also, if you can share the full year domestic volume guidance. See, so far, uh, first quarter, I have seen uh, the Wahan. First, thanks to Wahan, now we know exactly what is happening in terms of the sales and the registration. First time, we have seen a double digit. Okay, I'm a, I'm a strong promoter that given the kind of demography, 
even the kind of uh, infrastructure what government is trying to build in terms of roads and other connectivity and also the the public transport the population itself given that i think the single most uh, you know vehicle for mobility is uh, two wheeler okay so two wheeler will grow till 2019 we have seen uh, as cag are of close to 10% i am of the view that medium to long term that kind of a growth you can see currently first quarter was 13% this year could be more than 10% and first important uh, positive thing i am seeing is slowly uh, first quarter for example while i said 13% rural growth has been 17% okay this is the way the wahan classifies as rural but uh, some of the classification may not be maybe senior but okay but i am saying from the rto when i look at the rural uh, urban it is 17% so even now even if you take urban as urban and 12% and let's say you moderate the rural to some semi urban and some rural i i am of the view that first time we are seeing the rural becoming better two reasons according to me the confidence on on the rural side uh, rural side uh, the the overall you can look at rural urban in india 50 50 okay rural side um, the sentiments are positive uh, we had a very very bad summer but the 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 rain the monsoon seems to be normal of course another three more months are there for monsoon up to up to september october you will see monsoon in india and some part of south india it will go up to even november so i i got the view that uh, the the uh, self employed category in the rural are slowly now looking at new products when i say new products they were extending the existing product by service 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 now they are looking at some replacement some new product but i may not be able to give exact proportion but i am of the view that this is a good sign because india's strength is rural okay i am i am not saying that urban is not our strength but definitely rural india has to fire for for overall economy to do well early signals are seen now so would you say to say with the uh, with the higher rural demand the, uh, the first time buyers are also uh, seeing better traction from those customers uh we have to closely watch it but according to me you will see the better and better rural demand going up i think it will happen what is it and just lastly sir uh, uh, is there any plan uh, for uh, Uh, for so for doing some production for the e bikes and the norton in india sir uh, because we have a very good supply chain in india is there any plan to do that sir we will always always uh, evaluate you know depending upon the volume demand uh, strong supply chain of course india has got very very strong supply chain thanks to our our uh, uh, you know the relationship with bmw all most of the most of the suppliers are from india so i think we can leverage that so we will evaluate based on which is the best which is the best quality and we look at uh, you know which is appropriate depending upon the market so this is something we constantly evaluate thank you so much for this mr mandlesla does that answer your question yeah thank you so much yeah Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dinesh Gandhi from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Uh, uh, firstly, on the commodity cost, uh, are you seeing any signs of inflation uh, going forward? Uh, it had been pretty benign for last few quarters, but are you seeing uh, inflation in any of the key commodities, and it uh, resulting in impact on our gross margin going forward? See, we saw some impact in the Q1. i am of the view that uh, you will see some commodities there could be some slight increases see we saw aluminum going up in q1 uh, but we saw some softening in other material and uh, the precious metals so i think it will be a mixed view in my opinion it is not substantially go up but there could be some marginal cost increases going forward okay okay and in that context uh, have you taken any price hike in first quarter and uh, uh, second quarter so far What is that? The heavy can any price hike? Yeah, we took uh, about 0.2 percent in uh, quarter one, and some some small increases we have taken in uh, quarter two. 
which is also similar to quarter one about point two. Hello, can you hear me? Sorry to interrupt, sir. Uh, the participant has left the queue and has got disconnected. The next question is from the line of Raghunandan from Nuama Research. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Congratulations on strong numbers. Uh, sir, firstly, uh, uh, Q1 EV volume was strong at 52,000. Revenue could be around 600, 700 crore. Assuming 13% PLI rate, would 80 to 90 crore be a fair estimate for PLI incentives? Uh, uh, I mean, you have not booked in first quarter, but, uh, uh, you know, would that be a fair calculation? No, no, once we, once we make the judgment, uh, like basic and said, we will come back to you. Whatever is the Q1 PLI benefit and what will be the next quarter benefits. But only one thing we want to tell you that only two of our products are now approved. Significant volume products are approved. So we will come back to you when we, uh, when we plan to put our PLI. Got it, sir. Uh, so secondly, on the exports, uh, exports have done well with uh, double-digit growth, YTD, uh, with the growth expected in Latin America, Asia, and flat growth in Africa. Can we expect double-digit growth for full year FI25? See, this year, like I said, uh, the, the worst is over is my estimate because we went through some tough times in uh, Africa, which is a strong area. So that, uh, I'm of the view that you will see some improvement going forward. And uh, maybe a little bit challenges maybe there in Bangladesh, which is very, very small in terms of overall volume. We are happy that our Middle East is uh, doing better. It's a big market. Last time we have started uh, doing better than the industry. So I think going forward, we will further strengthen Africa. We'll start, uh, you know, investments in uh, LATAM and we'll start building. Middle East is in between, so we can we can take it to the next level. Maybe Bangladesh in a couple of months. We'll Asia, you know, you know, Sri Lanka just started uh, this bit of export. So Nepal is also already doing well. So Bangladesh may take little time, but I'm I'm very confident that these are very strong markets for TVS. Okay, ASEAN might take little time, but uh, please always remember that I'm of the view that sometimes you have to be patient. You have to be stay, uh, you know, and if you stay in the market, keep giving the products to the, uh, to the, to the customers, very confident that you will also at some point of time, you will start succeeding in ASEAN. Got it, sir. And uh, sir, also you are working on improving position in Europe. If you can share your thoughts and strategy there. See, Europe, we have started now, um, Italy, we are also now discussing, you know, some of the markets in uh, Europe. Okay, I think it will, uh, please remember, these are developed markets and we have to be showing some patience because customers need to understand us. So far in all these developed markets, we are present through BMW, the, 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 the relationship, the platform, whatever, the 300 CC, the 310 series, whatever we are selling in every developed market. Now, first time we are also putting our products into this market in TVS branding. So I'm, I'm very sure, again, these are investments which will take place between next quarter. Definitely these four, three quarters, you will see some changes in terms of investments and products going there and start identifying dealers and sales. Okay, so it is, it is, uh, it should be treated as a big investment and going forward, this is, and of course, we will be liberating our EV uh, products as well. Got it, sir. Thank you. Uh, just on the housekeeping side, uh, basically, sir, if you can share uh, the other operating income for Q1 and also TVS credit net worth for uh, March 24. Sure, sure, one second. Uh, let me give the, the net worth of TVS uh, credit services. As of March 24, it was 3,865, and we are at 4,333 crores now, uh, as far as net worth is concerned. Uh, what was your next question? Uh, other operating income for Q1, if you have it handy. Other operating income uh, is around 84 crores. Got it, sir. Thank you so much.
Thank you. The next question is on the line of Dinesh Kandi from Amit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, I'm so sorry. My line got disconnected. Uh, the second question was on Star City. So we have things to have stopped production of Star City. So is it for an upgrade or uh, we uh, think that space uh, will not be growing at a, uh, a reasonable pace? No, we did not stop Star City. I think we were changing over to certain, certain specific reasons. Okay, so Star City is a very strong brand for TVS and we are present in the market. You know, and uh, there is nothing new, but the new star city, uh, I, I won't say it's a new star city, the same star city because the customers, uh, overall customers in the market is huge for star city. So, we, we plan to a little bit of, uh, do certain improvements and changes that have been incorporated into that. Okay, okay. Customer side, customer side, there is no gap, practically it is, it is there every month in uh, most of the market. Got it, got it. And uh, on the EV side, e 2 wheeler side, uh, currently we have a reasonable spread of product portfolio covering from uh, mid uh, city speed to uh, high speed. Uh, what are the gaps that you would like to cover with the upcoming product launches? I think you, you wait for the launch and I can tell you what type of product it is going to be because we believe in looking at the customer segments and delivering products for each of the unique customer segments because that is that is that is what is very very critical so possibly in uh, between 2 2 and 2 3 you will see some of this best launches from tv got it got it uh, and lastly uh, mr can you share the uh, usb and our realization for the quarter what is the question exchange realization or exchange yeah Yeah, it's uh, 83.2. Okay, great. So thanks and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mukesh Sara from Avendis Park. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, good evening and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, while most of my questions have been answered, uh, so this question is on your upcoming EV launches. Could you uh, kind of share some aspects about these, uh, the, the new generation platforms? Uh, uh, so basically trying to look at uh, how are you looking at insourcing versus outsourcing of some of the components? Uh, uh, and, and, and would the new design or the new, new platform be uh, you know, a lot more cost effective uh, uh, in terms of your contribution margins, uh, assuming everything else kind of, kind of stays the same? First we look at the customer, customer segment, and then we look at what kind of uh, pro platform and the products are required. Then mm -hmm. uh, thanks to India, there is a very strong supply chain, so we decide what should be done inside. Sometimes we do inside as well as, you know, uh, both make and uh, buy. So it, these are all strategies depending upon the volume, scale, and, uh, you know, how, how it is going to be played with. Okay, and uh, definitely I'll tell you closer to the launch what kind of product we are looking at in the EV space in, uh, in, in the two-wheeler side. I am very sure it is going to be an exciting product, uh, product uh, to the market. Uh, sure, sir, I understand that. So what I was looking for is uh, versus your current IQ platform, um, how, would, how would the new generation platform be different? Um, uh, in terms of, say, uh, uh, say, would it have an uh, uh, integrated motor controller uh, or would, would there be some other such aspects which, which, which could probably, uh, you know, be reducing our costs in this way? It will be exciting, I can promise you, and it will connect with the customer segment. Okay, closer to the last, I'll give you all the details. All right, all right. Uh, thank you for this. Session. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Viraj from SIMPL. Please go ahead. Yeah, just two, three questions. Uh, first is, you know, you talked about product mix and customer mix as uh, one of the uh, key drivers of gross margin expansion. Can you elaborate a little bit more on this? You know, what, you, what elements in customer mix or product mix and geography mix has aided this? And how should one understand the sustainability of this margin? Margin will be sustainable because there is a very strong focus on the product mix. We also look at the sustainable cost reduction in a big initiative. So these are the two levers which are giving a significant benefit and based on the commodity cost increase plus minus, we also constantly look at, uh, given the strong brand uh, presence, we also look at our selling price increase. So it's a combination of 
the product mix uh, uh, you know which is which is fairly good and geography mix and material cost reduction uh, i think it is sustainable because that is uh, again volume dependent also uh, I, i have given you that when, when the volume goes up we can always look at uh, one supplier to two suppliers so the 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 same drive on uh, looking at multiple suppliers looking at uh, share of business looking at the product mix looking at uh, the volume scale benefits so all this combination come in the material cost reduction and so part yeah i understand the uh, part on the measures taken to reduce your raw material consumption what i'm just trying to understand is a little more granularity on the uh, product mix and the geographic mix part so would it be right to think that large part of the improvement would be because of product mix and geography mix these are the rm cost reduction measures or it will be by equal equal between between product mix geography mix and the material cost reduction is almost equal and what do you mean by product mix and geography mix can you elaborate more product mix uh, we have uh, starting from moped to apache okay so uh, each product we look at the total portfolio okay and uh, the pricing and even uh, even in the pricing we have also varying for example jupiter we have an entry product but we have uh, variants like uh, um uh apa uh, the jupiter grand a starting from the entry level zx grand a uh, so there are there are three variants on the higher price okay so depending upon that uh, you know and we always look at uh, why there are certain customers who look at the entry level variant but there are many customers who look at the proportion of zx and connected variants and uh, uh, grand a so like that so we always constantly look at for example how do we sell more on the variants which are connected with our zx which are grand a because that gives us better uh, margin but equally for the budget customers we will look at the entry level uh, model in uh, and i am giving you an example so second question is on the investment i think in last quarter you talked about uh, you know us making a one time for the investment in previous current services to meet the regulatory norms so you are not you are not clearly audible please yeah i am audible now Slightly better. Uh, maybe you should be thinking about you know uh, us uh, making a one-time investment in the regulatory capital requirements in previous credit services. So since that is now done in Q1, do you see any further capital requirement you know infusion from our side to previous credit services? No, no. Previous credit services uh, as of now this year uh, uh, we may not invest further because of uh, uh, the capital adequacy norms. Uh, We are at 18.9 percent. There are as of now no plans for further infusion, but the company is doing extremely well. They are doing, uh, they are growing uh, uh, and profitable. And, and the parent, you know, also acquired an, another MBFC uh, in consumer durable space. Uh, just trying to understand, you know, from your perspective, what's the thought process behind having two MBFCs? You know, competing and you know, how should one look at in terms of structure between the two? And now, as of now, we have uh, we are waiting for the regulatory approvals for that uh, new acquisition. It's a small NBFC with 5,500 crores of book size. Uh, 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 they are not competing with each other. It's a different segment in which they operate. It's a small ticket size where they have a strong markets in 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 the areas where TVS, uh, the credit services uh, has uh, 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 not all that presence, you know, a little presence there. And therefore, they will not compete with each other. Compete with each other, and then actually, the book size is going to significantly grow with that uh, addition. Sorry, can you repeat that? No, no. With that, uh, with that addition, the overall book size will significantly go up. No, I was just trying to understand, you know, why we have two NBFCs, uh, you know, uh, from a parent point of view. I think the similar acquisition could have probably done through the. Previous credit services as well, you know, given the kind of balance in they have, we could have easily funded it. Uh, so this the thought process. So yeah. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a decision of the holding company board to buy uh, the company, being a CIC company, to house the group-related investment there, the new acquisition. We are waiting for the regulatory approvals, and we will wait for uh, the approvals for the next uh, stage of action on this. Okay. This last question, you know, you mentioned that you also made an investment of 30 to 35 crores in e-bike subsidiaries, uh, given the losses they have been incurring now. 
I understand that the demand is weak and there are challenges in terms of pricing and discounts and all. But on the cost side, you know, how are we looking at it? You know, uh, is still bulk of the production still uh, based in those European territories? Is there an avenue where we can kind of shift the production to more centralized setup, say, in India? Uh, any thoughts you can give? How are you looking at in the cost part? See, these are investments. Unfortunately, I told you, Europe is going through some uh, difficult times or challenging times because of the economy and uh, the other pressures. But I'm very sure that uh, in these businesses, you know, one year, one and a half years, this could go through this way. But we have always seen on a medium term point of view, things will come back. Okay. Thank you very much. And good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, we have reached the end of our question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. All of you have seen, thanks for joining us in this call. All of you have seen a very strong Q1. Company continued its growth trajectory, recorded highest ever revenue, EBITDA and GDP. The quarterly operating revenue grew by 16% over last year and we are at 8,376 crores. And uh, with our unwavering focus on consumers' quality, we are confident of con continuing to grow ahead of the industry, both in domestic IV across IS and EV. We will continue to leverage scale benefits, focused premiumization, and sustained cost reduction, material cost reduction, and this will help us in focusing on EBITDA. But equally, we will invest in technology, we will invest in marketing, we will invest in building the brand globally. We continuously look at, uh, you know, the last five years, if you look at our EBITDA margin, significantly it has gone up and it has given all the benefits. Okay, and uh, I am very sure some of you would have heard the 32nd AGM of the company. Okay, as the chairman highlighted in his speech, uh, we are gearing up for exciting times ahead as we are transitioning to high tech, global, and smart mobility company. We have uh, just have the ability to delight the new age customers. We have fostered a passionate, motivated and aligned team, dedicated employees, partners, stakeholders working towards one goal. Again, once again, thank you. Thank you everyone for joining for this meeting, this call. Thank you. Thank you on behalf of BNK Securities that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.